Welcome to To the Foothills, a Colorado lifestyle and real estate podcast featuring mountain home real estate broker Robert Martin, who has over 25 years of experience assisting clients reach their goals and move forward. Tune in each week for a dynamic conversation with experts, Colorado adventurers, and residents that explores the ins, outs, and specific nuances of buying the perfect mountain home or selling your dream home in Evergreen, Conifer, Bailey, and surrounding areas to catch a glimpse into the Colorado lifestyle that's a part of you. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Uh, we have a great guest today, Brian Himmelman. Brian is an insurance broker and a longtime resident of the area. Brian, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. So um, I know you've been in the area for quite a while and you haven't always been in, in insurance, but have a great understanding of that process and, of course, the area. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I've lived in the mountain area, Evergreen, grew up in Evergreen, went to Evergreen High School, um, Evergreen Junior High School, raised my kids here. They both all went, or they both went to the Conifer schools, Conifer High Schools. Um, so I've lived here most of my life. Yeah, and it's, um, what is it like? I mean, you've seen a lot of development over the years. Having lived here most of your life and going to school here, um, what are some of the some of the things you've seen and, and what is it that you'd appreciate most about living here? Well, I'll tell you, Evergreen has grown a lot. I really enjoy Conifer. I really like our side of the mountain. We, um, we still have a lot of space between us. We still have a, a really good community and, the, and the, just the greatest people. When you look at the people around us, you, you really have to look hard to find the bad ones. Yeah, I agree. It, it seems like when folks move up here, Brian, they you know, they want uh, some serenity and some peace. And it may take a little while to kind of adjust to that lifestyle, but uh, it seems to happen. It seems to be, you kind of become a part of the nature and your surroundings and, and it kind of mellows you out, so to speak, or it just becomes a, a great place to, to be. And, and everybody is pretty friendly. I agree. It is. And you have your peace, you have your quiet, but I'll tell you what, the neighbors, neighbors up here are willing to step in and help whenever you need it. Um, whenever you need anything, they look out for each other, but then they leave you, leave you alone for the most part and let you enjoy the quiet. Yeah, I agree. And that's one of the reasons why we, we like living here. Oh, so yeah. as far as from an insurance perspective, that's very important uh, when someone's looking at purchasing a home in the foothills because of the mitigation uh, with uh, wildfires and, and different things with trees and brush and that sort of thing. So why is it important? It's kind of a silly question for homeowners to have homeowners insurance. Obviously, most of the uh, mortgage brokers require it. Oh, yeah. Well, the mortgage company is going to require you to have insurance, but still after people pay off their insurance, um, they still choose to have the homeowners insurance and, and rightfully so. It's one of your biggest investments. You might as well have it protected. And it's um, when you look for dollar for dollar, it's not that expensive. Even up here in the mountains, um, we have a lot less exposure in the mountains than a lot of the areas, say, east of, of I-25, where they see more hail storms, they see tornadoes. Um, we actually have it pretty good up here. And we don't generally get a lot of hail storms here, Brian, just because of weather patterns and you know, topography. Uh, hail that we get here is usually softer because of our elevation. I always say we're going to have one hailstorm that does damage about every four to six years. Gotcha. When you're looking at a, a policy, what generally does homeowners insurance cover, cover pretty much everything? Or is it kind of a menu of items you can pick and choose what you'd like? Well, it, different companies have different policies. Um, the best policies, in my opinion, are the policies that just cover everything. There's not a lot of picking and choosing. It's just covered. Um, I prefer that type of policy because when my clients call with a question, I know the answer. I don't have to look up to see which, which policy and, and what options you, you took on your policy. It seems that there's not any uh, overall general guidelines with insurance companies. They all kind of have their own, own guidelines they go by. So that seems to be, you know, an important factor when you're looking at, um, you know, who, which insurance company 
that you're going to choose. And, and as part of the real estate contract in the state of Colorado, you have the opportunity to have that looked at and, uh, and make sure that the policy is uh, of a price and uh, coverage is, is what you're looking for. What do you see, Brian, are the biggest mistakes that people make when insuring their homes? Well, the biggest mistake I think is, is shop by price only. Um, if you shop by price only, a lot of the time you'll end up with, um, well, with what you pay for. And you might not have the coverage that you expect. A lot of consumers these days, they, they don't understand it. They, insurance isn't exciting. I mean, we know that. And they don't look at it to see what is covered and, and what is excluded in a, in a policy. You know, my opinion, take the 15 minutes with, a, with an agent, with a broker, learn what is covered and get the peace of mind. Even if that peace of mind is for 15 minutes and you don't have to worry about it ever again, but know what you're covered for. What are some of the accidents that can occur uh, when, uh, you know, owning a home? I mean, what are some things you see, maybe some of the common things? What we see up here is we see a lot of frozen pipes in the wintertime, um, usually January, February. We'll see frozen pipes and we will, um, and we will see the hailstorm every once in a while. A lot of the hailstorms are not nearly what they are down the hill. We will see um, ice damming on the rooftops. And then we will see the fires. We don't see many fires, but when we do, they're usually kitchen fires or um, chimney fires. We don't have a lot of wildfires or, or I haven't had issues with wildfires up here. Gotcha. It's always something I obviously we're cognizant of and certainly um, it can happen, you know, recently and it's been quite horrible up north, but it's something that we want to, you know, you, know, you want to have an understanding of what that looks like and and be aware and try to do, you know, mitigation in your property. Um, and what are some things like if you had, you know, if I was just talking to you on the street and saying, what are three things that I could do to mitigate my property? What are just some, a couple things that come to mind? Well, mitigation, a lot of the time I will say there's, there's insurance company mitigations and there's firefighter mitigations. Um, and you have to be somewhere between. Mitigation is keeping the trees away from your rooftop. You don't have to cut down every tree in your yard. You don't have to cut down every tree around your house. Uh, we moved up here for the trees. We moved up here because we don't have a lot of asphalt and concrete. So do the, the smart mitigation, get the trees that are overhanging your, your rooftop or close to your chimney, remove those. Make sure there's access all the way around your property. If the firefighters do have to come to protect your house, make sure they can, um, they can get around the property. Make sure they have access to your house. I mean, I see a lot of homes up here that are on roads that are very difficult to, um, to maneuver in a, in a regular pickup truck, let alone a fire truck. Watch out for that stuff. And the last thing is, is our firefighters up here are, the majority of them are volunteers. They are out there protecting your house because they choose to, not because they're being paid to. Make sure it is safe for them. Um, take the extra steps. If your house is in an area where, um, where there's a wildfire, where you're being evacuated, get the propane tanks out of your house. Get the barbecue grill away from your house so that the firefighters know that it is safe um, safe to be there to fight it. They aren't going to be, you know, subject to a propane tank blowing up. You know, I've, I've seen, I've heard of situations where it has taken one entire crew to just put a hose on a, on a large propane tank to keep it cool. Don't do that on, don't put the firefighters in that position. And if you can get the small propane tanks away from your house, um, let the firefighters know it's safe. That's a huge benefit to them and it'll help you protect your house. Would you say, Brian, that would it be a, uh, a reasonable thing to do is call the local fire department and just have them come by and look at your house possibly and after you made a purchase or if you've been there a while just to kind of give you their feedback on things or uh, other companies also um, for that type of, uh, you know, for mitigation, that sort of thing? I think it's, it's always a, a good idea. Our, like I said, our firefighters are a little bit limited, but they are always willing to go out and walk through a house, walk around a house. Also, I mean, call somebody like me. I work in the industry and I also work very closely with the firefighters up here. 
and I'm I'm more than willing to go by, walk around a house, point out what needs to be done to protect the house. So either way, it's a good way to go. Okay, great suggestions. As far as um, the insurance, are there some things you see that uh, people are surprised that insurance doesn't cover sometimes? You know, you see a lot of strange things up here. But the things that insurance doesn't cover if you have good policies are uh, some insurance companies don't include mold and fungus, which we don't have a big issue up here with. Um, Where we have an issue is if you have water damage and you don't fix it correctly. We don't cover water coming from outside. So floods, that's flood insurance. And, And if you or in an area that's prone to floods, then your title company is going to require you to have flood insurance. The, um, you know, earthquakes, we don't cover earthquakes in this area. Those are the main things, but boy, sometimes we get calls because of, um, you know, woodpeckers can really do some damage and, and that's not covered. You know, we, luckily we cover damage from bears, which we get, you know, a couple of those claims <laughs> each year up here. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. There's no question about that. Um, So if somebody was in a flood zone, is there other insurance they could possibly get or, you know, if they're designated in that area? Yeah, flood insurance is is covered by FEMA, which is a um, national company. And it's also Lloyd's of London, which, which when you hear Lloyd's of London, you think, boy, expensive. But a lot of people find flood insurance less expensive with Lloyd's of London, London than they do FEMA. Hmm. I'll be darned. That's interesting. That's good to know. Like you said, it doesn't happen very often in our area, but it does come up occasionally. So um, growing up in the area and living here for an extended period of time, you've lived in different areas and that sort of thing. So what do you think people, if you're um, speaking with someone that's considering a move, what are some things they should consider when purchasing um, a mountain home in the foothills? That's a tough one. I couldn't live anywhere but here. You know, I just love the wilderness that we're in, the um, area we're in. I think people need to consider the commute. Um, If you have to commute down to Aurora, this might not be the place for you. And I've seen people that move up here, they commute to Aurora and, and it doesn't take long before they decide they need to find a new job. You know, consider some of the roads that you're on and make sure they are maintained well enough year round. That sometimes is a is a problem. But otherwise, I mean, I couldn't live anywhere else. I love this area. I love the people around us. And, you know, Conifer, Pine Junction, they're amazing places. And and really, we shouldn't be promoting them too much. (laughs) (laughs) No, I agree with you, Brian. There's really no other place that I'd rather live at this point in my life. You know, my wife and I have been here for 28 years. Uh, We recently moved uh, to a new home, as you know, as we're live fairly close to each other and it's just been great so uh, like I said at this point um, it's a very uh, we're very satisfied where we're at for sure so if you had to say one thing Brian what would be your favorite thing about living uh, in a mountain home you know I love again the peace and the quiet but I also love the fact that when I go into King Supers or Safeway you know people they're friendly you know people's names I love the, the sense of community that we have is different. We could find anything up here. Um, we can find any repair people, handy people, contractors up here. And I think you just get a better quality people. And I, I think that's a, a good way to put it, a better quality people up here. It does have a, a, certainly a small town feel and you can go to places and, and run into a few people that you know pretty much everywhere if you've been here a while. So I do appreciate that as well. Um, Every time I see you at Safeway, you're talking to two or three people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, it's a good place to go and socialize, I guess. Same for you. Um, So where can people go to learn about you, Brian, if they wanted to contact you or just get more information? You know, I have the State Farm office in Conifer. And you can, the best way to find me is you can Google State Farm, Conifer, Brian Hemmelman, State Farm. Um, They could find out about me there. Otherwise, I do a lot of community type stuff. You can find me. I'm I'm active with the Conifer Kiwanis. I'm active with Mount Evans Hospice. And you'll find me in the fall, always doing the big chili cook-off. So I make myself readily available. 
uh, maybe a little bit too much at times, mm. but it's part of being up here. It's part of being in this community. Is there um, anything you'd like to add, Brian? You know, I just appreciate you uh, thinking about me and asking me to do this. You're one of these people up here that you see all the time and, and are all big part of the community. So I appreciate you thinking of me as this, in the same way. Well, thanks, Brian. I really appreciate you taking the time. and It's been a pleasure to visit and some great information. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you. To the Foothills, a Colorado lifestyle and real estate podcast. On the podcast, I interview real estate experts, Colorado adventurers, and residents who enjoy the serenity and lifestyle of living in our mountain communities. Tune in each week for a conversation that explores the ins and outs of buying the perfect mountain home or selling your dream home and catch a glimpse into the Colorado lifestyle that's a part of you.